All right, hi guys, we're getting more late night Michi audio because this is a video I was not planning on making. So let me just explain a few things first and then we will get into the main point. Anyway, one, this uh, the background footage is in fact a stream edit. Um, let me know if you guys like that version of the stream edit. This is my normal stream formatting. Um, but I just didn't want to mess with it to blowing it up to just having the picture because sometimes that makes the artwork a bit blurry. Again, just let me know if you like it better or not, uh, if not. Also, um, I am still working on the con series. Don't worry, that's still coming. It's just with certain things going on right now, I didn't really feel very comfortable just kind of ignoring it with what is currently going on right now in um, the, uh, the Midwest and everything in America. And I know I'm going to be saying like um a lot. Uh, I kind of just wrote quick notes down and that's more to like how to stay cool because they're currently going through a heat wave just like how earlier in the year, um, you know, Texas was freezing and we're kind of going through with the same stuff. So, um, yeah, I think that's all good. Oh, um, also random, but I feel like I need to know this and I'm going to be bringing up in a couple more videos. Hi, I know this is going to date it, but I'm going to be at Annie Manga in Ontario, California at the end of July. So if you guys want to see me at a con, I'm actually going to be working a con. So I will make another video talking about that later, but just in case people want to get tickets now while they're cheap and stuff and yada, yada, yada. I'm not going to do my normal show at the end of the video like I normally do. I want to just stick it here so we're done. All right, good. Let's, let's, uh, there's also not going to be that much editing to the background footage just because I want to, again, get this pretty much out there because I'm already behind now. Let's, uh, let's get into the main point of the video. So, uh, first of all, hi, um, yeah, uh, there's a giant heat wave coming. Now, as someone from California, I'm kind of used to having, uh, giant heat waves. It's terrible and sucks, and we're kind of, our infrastructure is at least kind of somewhat built for the temperatures, um, other states are not. Let's go through this again. All the people that were make fun of te making fun of Texas last time, when this was happening or when they were making fun of the UK when the UK was having their heat wave because I've seen people a couple people I follow um on social media were talking about how it's like 80 degrees in their house and people were like 80 degrees in your house try living in Arizona try living in California yeah well I live in California and I've come to realize that hey other states aren't us and um other places are not like your own states they're literally going through the same thing that the snow was going through in texas just with heat people are dying this is not an exaggeration people are dying powers are being people's power is being shut off uh electric companies in some states are not making the power free so they can't afford to run their air conditioning nonstop. some places don't have central air they some of them don't even have ac units whatsoever there's also a heat wave going on in certain parts of canada right now too and so I'm making this video because uh, for many, many summers, I, me and my husband had to live in a really old house that only had a swamp cooler. So we had to make a lot of stuff work and we have gotten heat exhaustion multiple times. So I also want to talk about some signs of that if you've never experienced heat exhaustion before, because it mimics being sick, especially when it's a slow, uh, a slow descent into it. Because where I used to live, still in California, but it was the first time I ever had cold get cold. Like we would actually kind of somewhat have snow when um, we were living in our old place uh, in the winter. So it would get at least cold enough to have snow, which for most of California is kind of a big deal unless you live in Northern Cali or the mountains. So with that being said, we were used to cold temperatures and cold nights. So we went from that to suddenly summers without even basic air conditioning because the house was old. We had to learn to make do. And so that's what I want to do with this video. Also, um, above all of my normal social media links, I will have as many resources as I can find where people can find cooling shelters, other resources to stay cool because I want people to be safe. Because again, like I said, at the start of the video, People really are going through the exact same stuff that was happening in Texas last year. There are people dying. There are people being stuck in their cars. There are people who still have to go to work. There are people getting sick. Um, there are people who are worried about their pets and their children and the elderly. This is not a joke. And, 
and Six Spiky Round Boy is still a thing. A lot of people are trying to pretend that it's not. It is. And um, from the statistics, you know, there's a lot of Americans that are not vaccinated right now. So because of that as well, of the combination of everything, we still have Six Spiky Round Boy to worry about for those people who either couldn't get vaccinated or immune compromised and didn't have as uh, lucky of a dose because there's... Anyway, that's not the point of this. I'm not talking about Six Spiky Round Boy. Anyway, so let's get into the tips. I have my little paper ASMR here and let's get so the first thing I have is you need to freeze water bottles damp towels or clothes now I'm going to talk about this in a later point but this is not to drink this is just literally to cool you down this is to cool you down in your own house or in your bed um I know a lot of people that when they uh they don't like the like the wet feeling but it's kind of the best you can do when it's that or sweating. So they will cool you down. They'll keep you out. A reason why I say a water bottle is because you can keep refreezing it and keep more in your freezer. Same thing for damp washcloths or clothes and then putting them on you. They will like us. It'll slowly cool you down. Um, the next thing you need to have is get fans. You can get cheap circulating air fans to put around your house or to put around your apartment or to put around your room to help move airflow out. I did not realize for the longest time how much stagnant air really does affect a situation. Obviously, if it's still pushing out hot air, it's only going to be pushing the hot air around, but at least it will be sending it throughout in constant movement. So if you spray yourself with a water bottle, have the cooling system, it'll help just a little bit. Um, the next thing would be, <laughs> why are you talking about fans, Michelle? Why not AC? Well, here's number three. Not everyone has AC. And a lot of people that do, fun fact, I learned this the hard way. Most people do not have central air. If they have AC at all, many of them have a cheap unit they can buy at Costco or a window unit. And from what I've seen on TikTok and YouTube, there are people panicking because they are panic buying bunches of window units and they're just plugging them in and boosting up the power, which has a higher rate of having a blackout. So if you have a window unit, this is really important. This is something I learned recently. Like I said previously, when we had these hot summers, we had a swamp cooler. Since I've been in my apartment, we have a window unit. It's, it's a very big, beefy window unit, but it's still technically a window unit. So this is a really important thing that I didn't know for the longest time until mine broke and I had to get it fixed was... You cannot keep it too cold. Many people will want to have it where their window unit um, is like cooling their whole apartment or their whole house. So they'll like try to push it through. Do not do that. Do not do that. I am telling you right now that it's so dangerous to your unit and your power because the thing's going to be working on overdrive. Same thing if you're keeping it really, really, really cold. Now, I'm a lady that likes really cold temperatures. I hate being hot. I am one of those people that being hot actually like physically makes me angry. And so it always has ever since I was a little kid. So with that being said, some things that my parents have done, because my parents broke their AC broke back uh, in the middle of quarantine and they're both high risk. So they couldn't get their air conditioning fixed. They bought a cheap unit. And what they actually did was they were able to section off their living room downstairs to a little like cubicle to where they were able to make a single room a nice temperature. It wasn't cold, but it was nice. It was bearable. It was, oh my god, okay, we can sleep here. We can eat here. We can cook here. That's not a big thing. You need to have it be bearable. I know you're going to want it nice and cool. You're going to want to have it nice and frigid. It can destroy the unit. If, if it is too hot outside, it can destroy your unit, even brand new units. I've met people who when it's, 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 again, I'll bring it up, like back to California. I've met people, and I didn't know this, who would have their houses or their room set to like 72 when it was like 120 outside. Now, obviously, no one wants an 80 degree house. I wouldn't go that far, but you're going to want to hit for the high 70s um, if it's really, really, really hot out. You know, shoot for at most 10 under. Uh, or at least, I guess, 10 under what the temperature is outside. Because obviously, if it's like 120, you can't have it at 110. That's, you're going to bake. That's not going to work. But section it off by rooms. If you live with people and you don't really get along, well, you, you need to be healthy. Okay, You need to be alive because heat stroke and heat exhaustion is a very serious thing. And a lot of people don't realize that you can get it from indoors. You don't just get it from baking out in the sun. So 
you need to section off a room, bring in family, bring in pets, and have that be kind of the cool room. Don't try to push it throughout your entire house. Don't try to do this and that. You need to stay cool so you can stay healthy. All right? Now, when it gets cold, because it eventually does get cold, the next thing I have here is uh, set alarms if you have to. If, like, you got to wake up, because it, sadly, because when it's summer, haha, <laughs> um, it gets cooler much, much later. I was talking about this in a stream the other day where we would have summers where it literally didn't get, like, the temperature didn't drop until, like, 9 or 10 o'clock at night. That's what people are going through right now. If it comes down to it, get to the coldest part of the night, set an alarm on your phone or something, open your windows, circulate that bitch. You need to circulate it through your house, get those fans again like I was bringing up earlier, and then once um, it starts to heat up again, try to lock the cold in the best you can. I know it's a lot of work, but you can, in a way, kind of like... Uh, shield in the cold from the outside and you can give your air conditioning unit or your portable unit some rest so that way it doesn't overwork yourself it doesn't have a power grid don't have a power outage and so uh the next thing you have to do with what i was saying next is tin foil your windows if you can because this is really important because a lot of people were talking about like uh, just tin foil your windows it's really easy it's not gonna look nice but no 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 okay to those people yes that is great advice the tin foiling of windows is nice but i found out because of where i live and other places this isn't just a california thing some people have apartments you're not allowed to tin foil your windows because it looks ugly you can get fined for tin foiling your windows so it double check with your landlords double check with this and that I would like to hope that your landlord isn't a POS and would, would be like, oh yeah, no, t this is like an exception, go ahead. Ours did not. We asked about that. And they were like, yeah, no, you can't tinfoil your window because especially our window, you can see out from the street. So people who like can see inside the complex that I live in, they can tinfoil their windows in the heat because people won't see it unless you already live here. So that's kind of what I mean by the double standards. There's lots of places where they're like, haha, you can't do that. Or haha, you can't have a win a, a, like a fan in your window. So if you can, tin foil your windows. Make sure that, um, from what I read, I believe it's the reflective slide, slide, the, reflect, the reflective side, damn it facing towards the window like towards where the sun is so you can keep the cool in it might look a little you know uh sketchy but again it's better than getting heat exhaustion because i've witnessed heat exhaustion now why is heat exhaustion so important heat exhaustion is the warning sign to heat stroke that is literally where your body is getting so hot that your brain is pretty much boiling in your head and your body starts to get sick because of that because you know your body doesn't want to boil your brain that's not nice and so you will witness extreme fatigue dizziness nausea obviously the heat and this can affect you in so many other ways you will be so tired there was so many times in the summer that i would be exhausted from the moment I woke up it would just be dire or it would be so bad that I literally couldn't even do basic things I would be able to hardly get my work done I would try to stay cool and I would just feel like a constant state of sick and you will feel that and the longer and longer you stay in that the worse and worse it gets for your health because it is like you're slowly cooking your organs um if you have the signs of heat stroke please please don't take it lightly go to a hospital go 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 call someone because they can they can and have killed people so it is very serious you need to take these signs very seriously again i'll have resources linked below people can look at those but i just it's very important now on the heat exhaustion and heat stroke thing this is a very another important thing that not a lot of people talk about do not you'll be so tempted do not drink ice water i know you're gonna want to drink water and cool down it is actually so much worse for you it will shock your system drinking ice water if you're over-exaggerated and hot. It's better to drink room temp or slightly colder water. But the best thing for that to cool down would be to take a semi-cold shower. Don't go full ice bath. You could go into shock. You want to take a nice cooler shower or bath to calm down. I mean to cool down. Drink room temp water. Drink a lot of water. Keep water around you to where you can be drenching yourself in it. Try your best to be staying away from energy drinks. So, well, I mean energy drinks. Well, no, 
I don't mean energy drinks. I meant like Powerade and Gatorade. Those are okay, but water's the best. Stay away from coffees, iced coffee, soda. Um, smoothies are okay, obviously, but like don't be like, you know, chugging smoothies like it's nothing. You need to stay safe. The next tip I have right here, cook your food at night. Cook your food at night when it is the coldest point of the day and this way you can have food ready and done that you can pick at through your fridge or through other means that way you're not heating up your house even more this is something i learned i used to cook a lot back over the summer but again i would just be adding heat to an already hot house and that didn't do any good so do your cooking at night it's gonna suck but at least you'll have food in your fridge you can pick out later you can microwave you can do things like that if you need hot food but you're going to want to stick to cold foods, sandwiches, wraps, um, just plain old eating cold leftovers. Um, so that way you can also stay cool that way. Uh, and hopefully this way it won't overheat your house. And like I said, also overheat your power. So the next thing and the last tip I have is if your power gets shut off, because it will, sometimes it's from overloading a grid, sometimes it's your own power companies. I know in California, a lot of our power companies turn off our power in the summer to stop from fires because California catches on fire every year. So it could literally be overusing of, overusing of electronics, as in you know, people overdoing it with air conditioning units or other things, or just the power company trying to stop a like grid fire. So if it gets shut off and there are no signs of it coming back anytime soon, you need to find a cooling shelter. This is how sad it's getting. It's We're getting to the point where we have cooling shelters for people now. But it's going to suck, but people have died. Pets have died. This is a very serious thing. This is not a joke. I want people to stay safe and stay healthy this summer. Please. Um, and let's hope we can ride out this heat wave because uh, it's terrible and there's no sign of it getting any better. And, you know... I'm just, I'm not going to get into it, but I hope, I know I was like really rapid fire here, but I was trying to get my points across the best I can. Hopefully you heard me okay. I know I'm still having mic issues, but um, yeah, I will have a normal video on Wednesday. Thank you guys as always, and uh, I will see you next time. Please, please stay cool the best you can. Bye. <laughs>